Hey everyone, the Wobblefet here, and I'm here with some exciting news. Trainer Tower has recently acquired the Pokemon Attack Survival Calculator, which is an amazing tool that I regularly use when creating EV spreads. Survival Calc allows you to make the best EV spreads for your given goals, whether that be surviving an attack with the minimum number of EVs, or best optimizing bulk given a certain number of leftover EVs after, say, investing in attack and speed. If you used Survival Calc in the past, you'll probably be glad to hear that the process is now fully automated. You don't have to type in stats and modifiers manually anymore. In addition, a bunch of useful new features have been added that makes calculating otherwise complicated and technical spreads a breeze. It was developed by Stats, who is a great friend of mine and is also much smarter than me. You can find Survival Calc at trainertower.com slash survival calc, or by clicking the link in the header on the damage calculator. Let's begin with one of Survival Calc's most basic functions, surviving an attack using the minimum number of EVs. Suppose I was feeling trendy and decided to use a scope lens Kartana to take advantage of substitute and to punish switches more heavily. One of Kartana's weak points is its low special defense. Normally this is patched up with an assault vest or focus sash, but with our scope lens item, a 4 HP Kartana will just get annihilated by life orb Tepukoko Thunderbolt, as you can see here. Let's say surviving the Thunderbolt is important for our team, but we want to retain max speed and as much offense as possible to deal more general damage, especially to Pokemon like Snorlax. If we start by investing solely in HP, it takes quite a bit to survive the attack. As you can see here, 252 HP and 4 special defense does the trick, but it leaves no room for attack. Let's see if Survival Count can improve this goal for us. To start off, let's input the Pokemon we want to use. Tapu Koko is the attacking Pokemon, and Kartana is our defending Pokemon. The attack is Thunderbolt, item is Life Orb, and Tapu Koko is Timid Nature, so we'll choose Neutral because it's not boosting the special attack like Modest would. And then we just click Calculate. Survival Calc defaults to expecting minimum EVs. It looks like it returned 4 HP and 100 Special Fence as the fewest EVs to survive Thunderbolt. Let's go ahead and verify that back in the damage calculator. 4 HP, 100 Special Defense, does survive Thunderbolt 100% of the time. Compared to last time, we still have a lot of EVs left over. Assuming I did my math right, Kartana should have 148 EVs left over for attack. Yep, and it'll have 4 EVs left over for an extra point in defense as well. 148 EVs is a significant jump from zero, and we still accomplished our original goal of surviving Life Orb Tapu Koko Thunderbolt. Now, your first thought might be, how the heck does the calculator do that, and how can I trust that it's actually giving me the best spread? Just like we did in our example, you can verify your result in the damage calculator. Just like any calculator, Survival Calc is only able to do what the user tells it to do, so be sure to double check your work and make sure you entered everything correctly. As for the logic behind the code, Survival Calc takes advantage of something I like to call HP to defense ratios. In general, investing in the smaller stat will yield the greatest effect when EVing your Pokemon. For example, on Kartana, its base special defense is much lower than its base HP, so investing in special defense first meant we didn't have to use as many EVs to survive the same attack. The same concept applies the other way around too. Pokemon like Driftblum and Storlax with naturally high base HP usually get more out of investing first in defense or special defense. Using the concept of HP to defense ratios, along with others in its algorithms, Survival Calc basically sifts through the possible EV spreads that actually reach the benchmarks you've entered, then returns the actual best spread. For now, however, let's keep our focus on the applications of Survival Calc rather than its logic. Let's look at another example. Um, this time surviving two attacks on opposite ends of the spectrum at the same time. For example, consider standard 4 HP Garchomp. Against other Garchomp, Jolly Tectonic Rage has a 25% chance to KO, which is a bit too high for my taste. At the same time, a Porygon 2 with no offensive investment that gets a download attack boost KOs Garchomp 7 16ths of the time, this 43.8% um, comes out to be 7 out of 16, because 7 of the 16 damage rolls, as you can see here, uh, will knock out Garchomp at its given HP stat. 
If I had a team that would make it likely for opposing Porygon 2 to get an attack boost from download, this goal could be very reasonable to hit. Again, I could start by investing in HP and see where that gets me. Looks like... 108 HP does the trick for Ice Beam. Going back to Garchomp Z Ground, however, we see that while it survives the Tectonic Rage, it actually overshoots that goal by a little bit. Like Kartana, if our investment in attack and speed is important, we want to achieve these two goals using as few EVs as possible. Let's see what Survival Calc gives us. I'll just go ahead and refresh the page here. You don't have to refresh, but sometimes it makes our job easier just to clear everything out. Next, I'll put in Garchomp as a defending Pokemon, and I'll start off with entering Garchomp as our first attacker. You could also put Porygon 2 here first if you wanted. The attack is Earthquake, and it's a Z move, which as a result means it's not a spread move anymore. Garchomp is also Jolly, so it has a neutral nature. Since we also want to survive Porygon 2's Ice Beam, we click Survive Comparative Attack and start inputting Porygon 2's information. The attack is Ice Beam, Porygon 2 has a neutral nature, and it has no special attack investment. All that's left is to click Calculate, and we see a spread return of 52 HP, 4 defense, and 20 special defense. Let's go ahead and verify that our spread worked back in the damage calculator. 52 HP, 4 defense, 20 special defense. It looks like it does survive the Porygon 2's Ice Beam. Let's go ahead and check the Tectonic Rage. And it looks like it survives that as well. That's a total of 76 EVs, which means we saved 32 EVs overall compared to our 108 HP spread, so that's great. Minimum EVs is one of Survival Calc's functions, but sometimes it's not always applicable to what your goals actually are. This is where Best EVs comes in. You can think of Best EVs as a sort of opposite to Minimum EVs. Instead of trying to free up EVs for offense and speed, we use Best EVs to create the best bulky spread after you've already met your goals in offense and speed. Let's consider an Arcanine spread that already looks like this. With 28 speed, Arcanine outspeeds the Tapu Lele used by Shade Vieira at the Onog Invitational, and with 92 attack and the Adamant nature, a Flare Blitz and Extreme Speed combination attack will do enough damage to Oko 4 HP Tapu Koko. Just to show that it does, the minimum damage on Flare Blitz is 102, and the minimum damage on Extreme Speed is 45. 102 plus 45 equals 147, which is greater than Tapu Koko's 146 HP stat. Suppose I wanted Arcanine on the physical side to survive minus one liquidation for Baraquidid, and then just have the most special bulk possible. If I use the minimum EVs function, here's what would happen. I'll put an Arcanine, then Raquinid, Liquidation, minus one. And I'm assuming a Brave or Adamant Araquinid here, so I'll leave the Nature at boosting. Minimum EVs return 0 HP and 188 defense to survive that. Back in the damage calculator, I'll pull up a Raquinid. 188 defense EVs. And while it looks like it does survive that, we have a problem. We still have 200 more EVs that we haven't used yet. That's why we want to use the best EVs function in this case. However, we can't just click best EVs and calculate. This calculation assumes all 508 EVs are available, but they're not because we use 92 EVs in attack and 28 EVs in speed. To fix this, we need to find out how many EVs are actually available. Going back to my regular calculator, 508 total EVs, minus 92 attack, minus 28 speed, equals 388 total EVs available. Now that we know this, in our available EVs box, we can enter 388. Now after clicking calculate, we see survival calc returned a spread of 236 HP, 36 defense, and 116 special defense. Again, we'll verify this in the regular damage calculator, 236 HP. 36 defense, 116 special defense, and again, Arcanine survives this attack, but now with optimized special bulk working into this. One thing to note about best EVs though, in this example with Arcanine, to calculate the best specially bulky spread that led minus one liquidation, Survival Count came up with an arbitrary special attack to calculate against that was similar to Araquinid's liquidation on the special side. 
one that more than likely does not actually exist in the game. Normally this is perfectly fine, that means we optimize towards general damage. However, let's say you wanted to specifically reduce the damage of, say, Calm Mind Tepu Fini's Muddy Water. I happen to know that 44 special attack with a neutral nature on Tepu Fini knocks out Garchomp with a plus one Moon Blast. By clicking Comparative Attack, I can enter the information of this Tapu Fini to specifically optimize Special Bulk with respect to our minus one liquidation goal. So I'll enter 44 Special Attack, Neutral Nature, and Muddy Water. This time, Survival Cock returned a different spread, one that says Tapu Fini deals somewhere from 41 to 48 percent. Let's look at what the damage on our original spread of 236 HP, 116 Special Defense was. So Muddy Water versus this Arcanine deals anywhere from 41 to 49%, slightly more damage than before. However, keep in mind that by optimizing Arcanine's spread to this Tapu Fini's Muddy Water to take about 1% less damage, we might be taking 1% more damage from other special attacks we care about, and that's why Survival Calc originally gives us this spread optimized to general damage. However, you do have this option if this is important to your goals. Finally, let's take a look at one of Survival Calc's shiny new features, the multiple attacks function. This is honestly one of my favorite features of the damage calculator, because it allows you to optimally EV against combination attacks, which is normally very difficult to do manually in a plain damage calculator. The classic example of this is Porygon 2 surviving Golduck's rain-boosted Hydro Vortex, followed by a Skull from Pelipper. However, thanks to T-Man's demonstration of Brine Pelipper at Melbourne, this goal is now somewhat moot on Porygon 2. Um, so let's look at surviving another classic combination attack, Double Thunderbolt from Tapu Koko and Alolan Raichu. For this example, I'll consider Psychic Seed Mandibuzz. Suppose we have a team of Tapu Lele, Groundium Z Garchomp, and Mandibuzz. By leading Tapu Lele and Mandibuzz against the Coco Chew, we guarantee a Tailwind for Garchomp if they double target the Tapu Lele, or force Raichu to use its Stokes Spark Surfer early if he wants to knock out the Mandibuzz, and that allows Tapu Lele to deal a bunch of damage back with Psychic. Let's go ahead and start putting in our data. Our defending Pokemon this time is Mandibuzz. It has plus one special defense from the seed, and let's start off with Tapu Koko as the first attacker. Again, like last time, you could also put Raichu first if you wanted. The attack is Thunderbolt. It's holding a Life Orb. Timid Nature. And we're in Psychic Terrain. You can also set this field to none, since Psychic Terrain doesn't actually affect our calculations for Thunderbolt. Now, we also want to include Raichu as an attacker here. To do that, I'll select the Multiple Attacks checkbox, then click Add Attack, to put Tapu Koko's Thunderbolt on our list of attacks to survive. It gives you a notification here on the screen to let you know that it was added successfully. Next up, we wanted a low-end Raichu, Thunderbolt, and again, the Raichu we care about is Timid. You do not need to add Raichu to the list of attacks. The calculator automatically understands you want to survive all of the attacks in the list, plus the current one up on the screen, so that'll save you a few clicks. I want this Mandibuzz to have maximum physical bulk after hitting this goal, so the best EVs function would be ideal for me here. I do want to keep a few EVs for speed, however. 28 speed is enough for me right now to speed creep other Mandibuzz so I can taunt their Tailwind or Tailwind before their taunt. Since I'm looking at a moveset of Foul Play, Tailwind, Taunt, and Roost, I don't need any EVs in offense. 508 minus 28 equals 480 EVs available. So I'll go ahead and put that in the box on Survival Calc. Next, I'll give Mandibuzz the Calm Nature for now. I'm not sure if it'll be necessary to actually survive this combination attack, but we can check if it is in a second. Now all we do is click Calculate, and Survival Calc returns a spread of 252 HP, 196 Defense, and 28 Special Defense. Let's look at that spread over in the Damage Calculator. 252 HP, 196 Defense, 28 special defense, calm. Yeah, it looks like Mandibuzz's defense is still way higher than its special defense. We can probably get a lot more physically bulky by switching to bold. This time, Survival Calc returned 228 HP, 
132 defense and 116 special defense. Again, let's go ahead and double check that survival calc did what we told it to do. Let's pull up Tapu Koko. We're in second terrain. Mandibuzz has plus one special defense. Maximum roll here is 120, it looks like. We'll note that over in the regular calculator. Next up, Raichu's Thunderbolt. Does 92. 120 plus 92 is 212, which is less than 214 in Mandibuzz's max HP. Awesome! Additionally, if those two combination attacks won't Oko when Mandibuzz is a flying type, that means after Roost, that combination attack should always deal under half damage, which is really nice. There's still a lot of physical bulk left over, it looks like, so maybe in the future after testing this spread, I'll shuffle some EVs over to Special Defense or Speed if I feel Mandibuzz's physical bulk is good enough. Um, but for now, this looks like a decent start. While we're talking about combination attacks, let's go over another very useful feature on Survival Calc, the percent of the time box. Sometimes, you don't have enough EVs available to really justify surviving an attack 100% of the time. Commonly, players will EV their Pokemon to survive a certain attack 15 16 of the time, which is about 93.8%, which means that the attacking Pokemon would have to get the highest damage roll possible to KO their target. Doing this is sometimes debatable when talking about a single attack, and it's certainly a good topic for discussion, but when talking about multiple attacks, like EVing to make an attack a 3 or 4 at KO, or EVing against a combination attack, I think it's very rarely necessary to survive that 100% of the time, since it's far more probable your opponent will just land a critical hit than actually hit that combination of damage rolls necessary. As a result, for combination attacks, I almost always change the percentage box to 99.609375, which is 255 out of 256 times, and sometimes I go less than that. What I've done, however, is I've told Survival Calc to not worry about if Tepu Koko and Raichu both get the highest damage draw on their attacks. A 1 out of 256 chance. I'm content with that. Now when I click Calculate, it'll probably give me a different spread. And wow, that's actually a huge difference. I was expecting just a couple points drop from HP. Um, so let's verify that this new spread also survives the Double Thunderbolt. So with the new spread, Raichu does at max 90 damage. I'll go ahead and screenshot this for later. Now if we bring up Tepu Koko, no electric terrain, and let's compare the damage um, for both of them. If Survival Calc did what it was supposed to do, the two largest damage rolls should KO Mandibuzz, but no other combination of damage rolls should. 117 plus 90 equals 207 which is greater than Manabuzz's 204 HP stat. However, 117 plus 86, the next highest combination of damage rolls, only does 203 damage, which means Manabuzz does survive it. Another advantage of using this spread is that there is significantly less HP on Manabuzz, which means Celesteel will probably recover a few less points from Leech Seed, which is always nice too. So that's basically what Survival Calc does. Stats and I are working on developing the logic and coding up new features, most notably making the multiple attacks function work on opposite ends of the spectrum and introducing super citrus optimization in the citrus finder widget. Overall, survival calc should certainly save you a lot of time when optimizing EV spreads. I've personally been using this tool for a long time, and when combined with the regular damage calculator and speed tiers, really makes Trainer Tower a true hub for EV optimization in my opinion. If you have questions on the features, comment below on this video or on the Trainer Tower thread that will also be linked below in the description. I hope you all have a very nice day. Enjoy Survival Calc!